Let's start with number eight. Um, so negative three comma negative seven pi over six. Let's take a look at this angle first. See where it is. So negative seven pi over six. This would be negative six pi over six and another pi over six put it as at negative seven pi over six. So those are angle at least. Okay, and it's negative three from there. So we turn around, 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 we face in this direction and we want to go negative three. So that would be in actually this direction. So we could go negative one, two, three. And that could be the point negative three at the angle negative seven pi over six. So we're supposed to find uh, multiple representations of this. Um, one way would just be to find the coterminal angle that we would normally find, just standard position, just starting here, going in the positive direction. That would put us at 11 pi over 6. Okay, so we could do an angle of 11 pi over 6. And since that's right where we are, we're facing this direction, we can use a positive radius of 3. Okay. Um, we could also, let's see, we have this yellow dot here. We could, again, use a negative radius of 3. We could use a negative radius of 3 uh, if we wound up over here on this terminal side as well. We could do that by going this direction. Uh, that would be a 5 pi over 6. That would be the theta for that one. And now that puts us on this side, so if we went negative, that would take us back here. So we could also represent it as a negative 3 uh, at the angle 5 pi over 6. Okay, and one more they're asking for. So we'll put a little x right there. Um, let's see, what if we went all the way around? All the way around. Okay, it didn't stop there. We just keep going like that. That's past 2 pi. And right there, so we went around to 11 pi over 6, and then we went around another 12 pi over 6. So 11 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6 is uh, 23 pi over 6. So that's our angle, 23 pi over 6. And that radius would be uh, in the positive direction, because we are here at this terminal side. Uh, and that would be positive 3. So that is just under, uh, let's see, they wanted angles between negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi. So that was bigger than 2 pi. Um, so, let's see. There, there. So we could do this instead. Let's not go all the way around like that. Let's just go from here down to there. Simple. Just go down pi over 6 in the negative direction. So negative pi over 6 is our angle, and we are on uh, this terminal side. We don't have to go, like, start over here and go backwards. We are on this side, so the radius is positive. So there you go. So three representations for uh, a single angle. Now let's do number 14. 2 comma 7 pi over 6. So it says to plot the given point and uh, find the corresponding rectangular coordinates. So we can easily plot this. Like that angle 7 pi over 6 right there. Uh, and the radius is 2, so this could be 1, 2. And that could be our point right there. Right, so we want to find the rectangular coordinates. Uh, if you remember from the, uh, the intro video, the x value can be found by r times the cosine of whatever angle, and then the y value could be r times the sine of whatever the angle is. So. We take the radius and we just multiply it by the cosine of the, the angle that we're at. So r is 2, 
times the cosine of what angle? 7 pi over 6. Okay, notice that the cosine of 7 pi over 6 is going to be negative, and so that'll give us a negative x value. This is what we're looking at. We're looking for. We're looking for this x value. Okay, so that's this. Uh, and then we'll be looking for this y value, which we'll get by 2 times the sine of 7 pi over 6. So 2 times the uh, cosine of 7 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, the cosine of 7 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. And the next would be 2 times the cosine, or 2 times the sine of 7 pi over 6. So the, co the sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. So now we just simplify as much as possible. Cancel out these two, so we get negative root 3. And the y value would be 2 times negative 1 half, so it would be negative 1. So if we were to move uh, left the square root of 3 and down 1, we would be at the same position. On that terminal side, a distance of 3 from the radius. And that does it for 14. Um, we'll do a similar thing for number 23. The only difference is it's not a, a sine or cosine that we're familiar with. It's just a, kind of a random angle. So negative 4.5, that's our radius. Uh, 1.3, it's a good exercise in remembering what radians are, though. So we'll plot this on a polar coordinate system. Angle of 1.3 radians. Okay, so... Um, Remember that this is not one radian. This is pi radians. That's 3.14 radians. So about a third of the way there, a third of the way to 3.14 is about 1. Uh, 1.3 is a little bit bigger. Um, and how far would this be? You know, How far would halfway be? Uh, let's see. We could just turn this guy on. And I can uh, make this a little smaller for you. So pi divided by 2 is 1.57, so it's not too far off of pi over 2. So we'll just go like that, 1.3. That's about how big that is. And we'll go negative 4.5. That means that we're going to actually go down in this direction. All right. So negative 4.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4.5 would be right there. Okay, so there is uh, that point in the polar coordinate system, and we are going to be looking for the x value and the y value. Right. So a little more quickly this time, we know that this is going to be the radius, negative 4.5. Let's see, times the um, the cosine of the angle, cosine of 1.3. Okay, so we're going to get the cosine of 1.3, we're going to multiply it by the uh, radius, so that's going to give us a negative value. Okay. Uh, so that'll put us in the, well, on the left side. And then when we look at the y value, that's negative 4.5 times the sine of uh, 1.3 radians. And that'll be a positive value, the sine of 1.3, right, in this first quadrant, times negative 4.5 will give us a negative y. So we'll have a negative x and a negative y. Yeah. So the way that we actually calculate this is to grab the calculator and just calculate. Uh, so negative 4.5 times the cosine of 1.3. Just going to get some decimal approximation. We'll make sure we're in radian mode, which we are. And hit enter. We get negative 1.204. And then we'll go for the y value. Negative 4.5 times the sine of 1.3. That's 
negative 4.336. So if we remove to the left 1.204 and down 4.336, we'll be at the same place as if we uh, went to an angle of 1.3 radians and went in the opposite direction, a distance of 4.5. Okay, that's that should do it for that one, for those kinds of problems. Now let's move over here. And um, as in the example video, we have the fact that uh, x is equal to r cosine theta, and that y is equal to r sine theta. We can use those substitutions, and uh, if y is equal to f of x, or if uh, some a is equal to uh, f of x plus f of y, or something like that, we can just make these substitutions. The x's can get this, and the y's can get that. And uh, we simplify, solve for r, hopefully, and get a, a whole new function, but in the polar coordinate system. Uh, so if all that made sense, that's great. If not, let's get more specific. 50, 4x plus 7y, minus 2, equals 0. So we just make these substitutions, 4 times x. So x is our cosine theta. y is our sine theta. Negative 2 is negative 2. Um, well this is just 4 times r times cosine of theta. And this is 7 times r times sine theta. And uh, when we add 2 to both sides, because uh, that doesn't have anything to do with r. We want to solve for r, get it by itself. So we got all the r terms by themselves. We could factor out an r, get 4 cosine theta plus 7 sine theta equals 2. r is equal to 2 divided by 4 cosine theta plus 7 sine theta. And that'll do it. It's good enough. Um, Let's do another one. Yeah, x squared plus y squared squared equals 9 times x squared minus y squared. OK, let's see what comes out of all this. Um, so let's just make those substitutions. That's going to give us r cosine theta squared plus r sine theta squared squared equals 9 times uh, r cosine theta squared minus r sine theta squared. Right, so we'd like to solve for r, and we'll see if we can make that happen. Um, let's see, this will be r squared cosine, if you'll notice this is very similar to the intro video, I did something like this, at least this part of it, uh, I'm just going to keep working with this, we got r squared um, times cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Let's see, of course, this is squared. Okay. So this whole thing is still squared from the original. Um, and now this is 1, so this is just r squared. r squared times 1 is r squared. Squared, so r to the fourth. All right, so that's the left side. Let's work on the right side. Let's see, maybe something similar will happen if we uh, put, you know, square each of these things. r squared cosine squared theta minus r squared sine squared theta. Um, let's see. We have... We can factor an r squared out of all this. r squared...
cosine squared theta minus r squared, or not r squared, uh, sine squared theta. Let's see. If you remember from your um, trig identities, if you take a look, um, it's probably referenced in the, the front or back cover of your book. Um, this is one of the possibilities or the options for the double angle formulas. Um, so what we have there is 9r squared times the cosine of 2 theta. All right. And... So now r to the fourth equals 9r squared cosine 2 theta. We could subtract 9r squared times the cosine of 2 theta and have that equal 0. Factor out an r squared times r squared minus 9 cosine 2 theta. And so either r squared equals 0 r squared equals 0, which could be the case, or r squared minus 9 cosine 2 theta equals 0, and r squared equals 9 cosine 2 theta. Um, and since this function can take on the value of r squared equals 0, like this I could be 0 if, um, let's see, if this were um, pi over 4, then this would be pi over 2, and the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, times 9 would be 0, so we just don't really need this. So this does the job. Right. Um, like all those points get, uh, we get to all those points. And that should, uh, that should pretty much cover everything we need to know. Alright, so uh, thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.